Hello everybody, this is Tim again here, here with my review for Leprechaun 4 in Space, the uh, shit-tastic sequel we've all been waiting for. I'm just to jump into this fuckfest, um, I Warwick Davis back as the Leprechaun, he's, he's fine once again, but they give him like these really shitty scenes in the film where he like fucking looks at the camera and monologues about what, about what he's gonna do, like just to, just to further, they further, they use that as like a plot device to further the plot. So basically in this film, I mean, that's really fucking annoying when they do that. But basically, in this film, Leprechaun obviously is in outer space. This film is directed by Brian Chinchard Smith, who also did Part 3, which I liked. Um, let's go ahead and say it. This is a half a star. <laughs> this film is a half a star. I recommend staying away from this film at all costs, unless you're a diehard Leprechaun fan. And just to jump into the film, you got Space Marines. Um, Leprechaun does a lot of gunfighting in this one. Uh, which is weird because he's like a magical creature. And just to put the Leprechaun in space, that brings the franchise down to like a C movie style level. I mean, once you put once you put him in space, he might as well. The whole movie might, is just even more of a joke than what it already was. So you might as well just make it completely all all out stupid and have robots and androids and everything around and fucking R two D two show up. If you're just gonna go th that stupid, I mean, with it. But they don't, or they don't have the budget to. It seems like most of the budget was spent on the second creature, this doctor guy who the leprechaun like transforms into a monster. <laughs> but anyway, jump into it. There's these space marines. They're going to this other planet to like assassinate the leprechaun because he keeps like fucking up a mining operation, I guess. Um, the leprechaun's got like this alien princess there, and he wants to um, marry her and then kill the king, so the leprechaun will become king. The, the princess girl he wants to marry is a total bitch. She's a complete asshole. She's no better than the leprechaun, which makes it funny because it makes them a perfect match. Uh, the marines show up. Uh, you get they, One of them shoots like this alien hand puppet that's hiding behind a rock. It's pretty hilarious. They, as as they, go, they go to kill the leprechaun. Um, leprechaun kills one with a lightsaber. Now that right there, that's kind of funny and kind of amusing. Shows that they're trying to be a little bit creative with it, but that's about as far as it goes. Uh, they shoot the shell of the leprechaun, blow him to pieces. One thing I find funny is they throw a hand grenade at him first. The hand grenade is actually what blows him to pieces. They throw a hand grenade at him, and the the princess is standing there, and he actually jumps on the grenade and sacrifices himself like for her. But still, at the same time, I guess he knew he wouldn't die by jumping on it and exploding. But still, I'm thinking this is not very char characteristic of the leprechaun. Why would he really give a fuck what happens to the girl? I mean, to that point, but whatever. Anyway. So... They take uh, the princess aboard the, the ship. Now, all the CGI shots in this film look like utter shit. Uh, they're so fucking terrible, it's unbelievable. They take her aboard the ship. And then fucking... Uh, the lep one of the soldiers is like pissing on the leprechaun's body. And this green ray like shoots into the dude's dick. So like, the leprechaun basically hitches a ride in the guy's dick uh, to, the, to the ship. <laughs> but, um... And then like the leprechaun's head, leftover head is like smiling like at the audience. Like, oh yeah, in case you didn't get it with the dick ray, I mean, with the green ray shooting up to the guy's dick, something bad is going down. <laughs> once the guy, once the people get on the ship and they're all having fun, like, eh, the dude, like, uh, who uh, pissed on the leprechaun, like, gets a heart on, the leprechaun comes out of the dude's dick. This is like a reference to Alien, uh, where instead of it coming out of his chest, the alien comes out of the dude's dick. I actually thought that was mildly funny. A little bit of invented, a uh, little bit of uh, inventiveness there. And then Leprechaun like turns into John Wayne for a minute and like uh, dressed up like a sheriff and he jerks out a gun. He's like, "I'm not gonna hurt you. The hell I'm not." And he like shoots a gun out of this girl's hand. Um, there's a scientist in the movie. She, uh, she's supposed to be like working for the guy who runs everything, named Doctor Mittenhand or something like that. He's like some dude who's like fused with a robot body, but it only shows him from the front. And whenever it shows him from the back, he's like an obvious puppet. <laughs> Whenever he's from the front, though, he doesn't look too bad. But anyway, and uh, she's like, she looks like a Playboy model, to be honest. I mean, she's not bad looking, but she looks fine, but she looks like a fucking Playboy model. I'm supposed to buy that this girl's a scientist, yeah, just like Jessica Alba was in Fantastic Four. Yeah, sure, sure. Tell me no one. But anyway, <laughs> Leprechaun's on the ship, he comes out of the dude's dick, Leprechaun starts assassinating everybody. This movie's not even really about the Leprechaun's gold. He's not even really looking for it. He's just like killing everybody on the ship because they all have his bride, basically. Pretty much the same plot from part two, except in space. <laughs> but uh, he's killing everybody on the ship. One thing I thought was mildly amusing, the dude who like plays the sergeant, he's got like a metal plate in his head, and he has some funny lines in it where he's all the time, like he grabs this uh, this dude and he goes, Duh, listen you pencil neck geek, I'm going to, uh, you better sh uh, get Dr. Mittenhand for me, I'm going to break your teeth out and shit down your throat. 
And uh, the dude like replies back and says, no, thank you. I've already had my lunch. <laughs> Some shit like it I thought was funny. Um, other stuff in the movie. You guys see with the leprechauns like fucking with one of the soldiers and he like appears on a, a monitor and goes, let's talk about safety in the workplace. And he like chops off one of his fingers and he like sets his finger on fire and he goes, as Shakespeare says, shit happens. I thought that was mildly amusing. Leprechaun pretty much picks them off one by one. One thing I was so horrible in this film is Leprechaun gunfights like all the time. He doesn't even hardly use magic. He just mostly just gunfights over and over. And that's really boring. I miss all the charm and the magical stuff from part three. It's really wasted here. Leprechaun just shoots and shoots and shoots. And whenever somebody directs a gun out of him, on him, I mean, he just like runs behind like a block or something and hides in the ship so they won't get shot. But later on in the movie, he gets shot all the pieces and blowed up and his legs are the only thing left. And the girl walks up to him, the girl soldier does, and he like fucking just regenerates from his feet and then kills her. And I'm thinking, well, if he can just do that, bullets evidently don't have any, don't make any harm to him whatsoever. So even in the first movie, they didn't. So why the fuck is he like hiding all the time when they're shooting? Why doesn't he just take their shots when they're out of ammo, just go up to him and kill him? I mean, what? what? <laughs> Worst it could do is slow him down, but what the fuck ever. But anyway, he takes them out one by one. One dude, he drops like a crate on top of him. And the leprechaun goes, smashing, simply smashing. And I'm like, that's a pretty horrible dialogue. And I don't know if it's just me, but the leprechaun's actual makeup in this film looks weaker to me than the makeup from the first three. Um, other stuff. The guy who, like, runs everything, his name is Dr. Mittenhand. He has, like, this sidekick dude or whatever who's basically Mittenhand's bitch. Uh, the Leprechaun, like, throws him against the wall, throws this, like, plate or whatever, or tray table, I mean, and hits him in the face with it. It makes his face out to be, like, some big, like, circular look or something like that, big flat circular pancake look, like a Warner Brothers cartoon. And that was too much for the vibe of this film. This film plays it too serious for my liking, and most of the death scenes are pretty bad. You get a scene where, they, where two of the soldiers are, like, inside of this fucking, um, contaminated room and leprechaun slashes one of them's outfit you don't see the guy dissolve or anything but later on when they get out they look down at him and then he's a skeleton and i'm like that's such a wasted opportunity it's such a wasted death scene the guy who's the main character of the film i don't know his name brooks books something like that maybe i don't know um he falls in love he basically he hits it off with the girl scientist and you get all this uh, cheesy i mean it's obvious they're going to get together and you get all this cheesy shitty ass uh cutesy dialogue and all this stupid shit where he's like uh you better wait here. Uh, I've been trained for this kind of stuff. She's like, uh, well, I can take care of myself. I have a black belt in karate, and I had a merit badge. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> fuck you. Uh, shitty dialogue. But anyway, he fucking leprechaun turns the scientist guy, Mittenhand, into a fucking human, I mean, a fucking mutant scorpion spider creature. And the effect for him looks looks nice, but he doesn't do anything. He captures Miguel Nunez, is in, who is in this film, which I like that actor, but he doesn't do much in this film. But he captures Miguel Nunez, has him up in a spider web, but doesn't kill him for some reason. But when the girl scientist shows up, he manages to rip her pants off. And you can see her running around her underwear for the rest of the movie, which is fine. But I'm like, come on, movie. If you're going to just want the chicks to get naked, just have them get naked. Ripping the pants off like that, this, I mean, it's just ridiculous. And then fucking the alien princess girl like gets back together with the leprechaun and she shows her tits to like Miguel Nunez and uh, the guy Brooks or Books or whatever. Um, and then the lady scientist is like, no, don't get so excited, boys. On her planet, that's a death sentence. So I'm like, how do they even fuck if you see their if you, how do you fuck a girl on their planet if you like? I mean, a royalty girl. She the moment you see her tits, you die. What do you fuck her when she's got like her clothes on or something? I, whatever. That's so stupid and such needlessly needlessly thrown in there for a tit shot. I mean, it's not horrible. I mean, the tits, I mean, whatever, but <laughs> fine. That's fine, you know. I'll give it a point for that, but for the way that it uh, shows it, you know, it's so fucking horrible, writing-wise. But uh, anyway, the mitten hand scientist guy, eventually, he's like, starts trying to kill the uh, fucking the scientist girl. I, I don't know her name. I forgot her name. I don't give a shit about anybody in this movie. I like Miguel Nunez, and even the guy who's the lead, Brooks or Books or whatever, he's not too bad. I mean, he's got a little bit of a likability to him, but just his character, I don't give a fuck about. It's generic city here. I don't give a fuck about this lady scientist either. But the spider guy gets ready to eat uh, the, the scientist girl, and uh, she, he's like, keeps saying, feed me, feed me, and I'm like, well, if you're so hungry, why don't you just eat Miguel Nunez, but whatever. <laughs> But he gets ready to eat her, and she sets, she fucking hits him with a fire extinguisher and freezes him. And he goes, help me, help me. And I'm like, oh, the fly. You're so clever. Never seen that one before. 
And then she fucking blows him up, shoots him all to pieces, and he just explodes. So I'm like, well, he didn't kill anybody. He was basically just an obstacle to overcome who didn't mount much to anything. <laughs> anyway, they could have used the budget they spent on him and used it for the fucking leprechaun makeup or more for the effects in the film, but whatever. Jump back into the film, the leprechaun puts a force field around the escape ship and uh, sets off the auto-destruct on the ship to kill everybody else. The leprechaun doesn't even really seem like he's very interested in even killing the soldiers until he finds out that they actually took his gold from the planet that he was on at the beginning of the movie, and they, like, shrunk it down to size so it'd be easier to move around. Um, but when he finds that out, he's like, oh, this shit just got real. <laughs> uh, but anyway, so then he wants to take him out. The sergeant, he, like, puts him in, like, puts a bunch of, straps a bunch of bombs to him or whatever to do with a metal plate in his head. And then you find out that but then he makes him dress up like a woman for some reason. I guess just for comedy relief. Um, and then he like tries to kill Miguel Nunez, and this before right before Miguel Nunez gets captured by the spider, uh, spider fuck creature or whatever you want to call it. Uh, he's with him, and uh, the sergeant is like went crazy for some reason. Leprechauns put him in some kind of crazy trance, and he tries to kill him, and he sticks like a knife or a blade in a a fucking electrical socket and gets electrocuted and he falls down you find out he's actually a cyborg and the effect for him being a cyborg is like so shitty you can like tell it's an obvious puppet even when it falls to the ground it's like so bad it's like I'm, it's like ed wood territory the special effects in one through three they were decent and enjoyable the special effect here for the cyborg falling down is like ed wood man it's like ed fucking wood <laughs> without the charm but anyway and so eventually uh they gotta solve the auto destruct thing uh, the leprechaun gets hit by the, the the ray that was used to uh, shrink his gold, except in reverse, and he turns into a giant leprechaun. Of course, he looks at his dick and goes, man, big is good. <laughs> I admit, I actually got a laugh out of that. I will admit, I got a laugh out of that. Um, but anyway, so the leprechaun starts trying to kill uh, the main guy, Books. I, guess. I, don't, I don't fucking know his name. I'm going to call him Books. He tries to kill Books, and he, uh, he, he says a few humorous lines, like, where are you, short ass? And he's like, G.I. Squirt. I got a little bit of a chuckle out of those lines coming from Warwick Davis. He tries to kill him, and he keeps fucking missing him and everything. Uh, can't get a hold of him. <clears throat> and eventually, uh, he opens up, like, the, the pod bay doors or whatever, and the leprechaun goes flying out. And there's and if you look close, you can see a tumbleweed blow by with the leprechaun, and I'm like, fucking tumbleweed in space? What? That's dumber than shit. Leprechaun, it's like part of this movie wants to be like a joke and a satire on sci-fi films, but the other part wants us to like actually give a fuck about what's going on. You should not give a fuck about what's going on in this movie. A movie about a leprechaun in space, this whole movie should just be one long joke. Everything in it should just be a bunch of little clever jokes that make up for an okay, passable C movie time. That's pretty much it. Um, but anyway... Slepcon flies out in space and he fucking blows up into a big pile of green shit, which is, I like this explosion better than his explosion in part two, but still, it's nothing to write home about or anything. They managed to turn off the auto destruct. The password is wizard. Those mitten hand kept referring to himself as a wizard, quoting the Wizard of Oz or some shit like that. Um, and then fucking the Leprechaun's body parts are like floating out in space and you see his body parts on the like monitor screen or view screen or whatever. And they look so fucking shitty CGI, it's unbelievable. And Leprechaun's hand like gives Miguel Nunez and uh, books and uh, uh, porn star scientists the finger in really shitty CGI. And it looks fucking horrible. Uh, so just to end this, this is shit fest. I can't believe the same guy did three did this one. But he was doomed to fail with a dumbass idea like putting the leprechaun in space, which this creature's this character should have never been put in space. That is a stupid fucking idea. Um, what started off as a what should have been just a fun little B movie series turning to like sea level scoop it up with a shovel horse shit. But just to finish it off with this movie, this is a half a star. I don't give a fuck about this movie. I'll never watch this movie again. Um, I only watched it for this review. I own this movie because I'm a completist and I don't and uh, I have it. It came with my collection when I bought it. But other than that, I'll never see this movie again. So I'll see you guys again with Leprechaun in the Hood, which I haven't seen in a long time, but I already know can not be worse than this one.